So, so we need to break those trends. We need to break not necessarily the economic trends of GDP increase because many government, most governments actually, if you come down to it, think that growth is an essential ingredient of their future projections. And uh, we're not objecting to, to economic growth, but we need to decouple emissions and environmental pressure from economic growth. So we need a climate policy that can, can have a relatively low cost and, and maintain economic growth, but at the same time reduce emissions so far that we are not confronted with very uh, running away uh, climate change. So we took the two degrees uh, temperature increase target that was expressed by the Cancun agreements and Copenhagen Accords and confirmed in the last uh, conference of parties in Durban as the, being the long-term target that governments are aspiring to. So when we get a, a least cost pathway to get to, those, to, to that two degree target, we see that we have to start reducing our emissions immediately and we cannot wait another five to 10 years before doing that because in the next decade or so, we're gonna have a lot of investments in energy, energy infrastructure. And if we do not start tackling our energy infrastructure right now, we're already locked into so much emissions that it will be very hard and very costly to later on still reach the two degrees. So delaying action is very costly and means that it's very, uh, that it becomes much more difficult to reach the two degree targets. So basically the, the costs involved in reaching a two degree target and doing that in least cost way already implies a substantial cost and already implies several percentages of GDP loss. And that means that the stakes are very high. It means that we are talking about real big money. And if we're talking about real big money, as the OECD, we always say, if you're talking about so much money, you have to do it in a cost-effective way. Because if you do all these policies that are also getting you some emission reductions, but that are much more costly, then that means that it will eventually become unaffordable. And we cannot afford unaffordable policies because we cannot afford to lose sight of our, our long-term policy goal of two degrees. So we need cost-effective policies. And for us, cost-effective policies mean, first and foremost, getting clear long-term targets on carbon uh, and where do you want to go with your policy. Because right now, the signal might be clear on a very abstract level, as in all governments say that they want to aspire to the two degrees. But at the same time, if you look at the Copenhagen pledges and the Cancun agreements pledges, um, they're not on the track for a least cost pathway for two degrees. So they're, they're a, basically the short-term action is not enough to have a, a, a least cost two degree pathway. So the signal that, the, that they're sending to the market is we're not going to do too much right now. And yes, we think we'll, may, we'll, we'll do more in the future. But of course, that creates an uncertainty. So we need a long term stable uh, targets that are very clear and that are committed to by governments. And then because the stakes are high, and I said we need cost-effective policies, we think market-based instruments are the best way to achieve that as a basis for the policy, not the only policy. But use carbon pricing essentially where you can use it, because that will give you the emission reductions in the cheapest places, and it will tap into as many reductions as possible. But of course, carbon pricing in itself is not enough, because there are certain emission reductions that you want to achieve that you cannot get through get to with carbon pricing. And one example is uh, R&D in, in clean technologies. If you want to stimulate R&D, the, the benefits of R&D are very uncertain and there are always spillovers to other users so that if one person uh, develops the, the new technology, he will not take care of what the other, uh, that it benefits others as well. So therefore, we need to subsidize R&D, uh, but have to do so in a technologically neutral way. We shouldn't pick winners and say this technology will be the technology that we're going to subsidize. Rather, you would stimulate green technologies development in general.